So I don't have everything pictured here that we're gonna use to make this job happen. There's some uh, fittings and hoses that I'm gonna show you later on in the video how to use. But I do wanna show you what parts that you need that are essential to make this job happen. Like if you're ordering something from overseas from a junkyard or maybe you found a, a vehicle that had a two LTE in it and it's wrecked, uh, I, I just wanna make it clear what parts you have to pull in order to make this job happen. So the number one part that you need is this turbo exhaust manifold. These are not available new anywhere. This one had a EGR. You don't have to pull the EGR to make this job happen because we're gonna build an EGR delete plate. I'm gonna show you later in the video how we're gonna do that. So definitely snag that. And then this turbo exhaust um, dump pipe. This is a, a flange that we ordered off of an eBay seller that we're gonna use to plumb in our exhaust. And if you can get the whole exhaust, that's a, that's a great way to, to plumb it in, but a lot of them are rusted out, or if you're getting it shipped, you don't wanna pay to ship this big giant exhaust pipe. So just grab one of these, that's essential to make this job happen. Also, air intake stuff. So these air intake pipes are also not available new. And although you can build a custom air intake, it's way easier if you can use these components that came with the turbo kit on whatever vehicle you're pulling it from. We also have a used CT20 turbo here. Uh, if you are gonna use the original turbo that came with uh, whatever vehicle that you're pulling this uh, turbo kit off of, uh, do make sure and rebuild these. They do leak oil uh, over time, and uh, these journals can get pretty wobbly in here. This one's not that bad. We're actually gonna put a, uh, a new one on for this project, but uh, it does help if you can get this, um, even if you are gonna use the new one, because we're gonna pull a few of the parts off of this for our new turbo. This is a turbo stay. It's basically just a bracket that keeps everything from rattling around. Not essential, but it does make the job last longer. Uh, it, it'd be a more quality install if you can grab one of these. And here's some heat shields. They're not essential to the job, but it is nice to keep your uh, components under your hood, um, well, from getting too hot. So uh, if you can, grab those as well. The rest of the stuff you see here is all new parts. And anytime you can use new parts, that's the best route to go. So these are all Toyota parts over here that we ordered from Japan. And these guys right here are some flanges. I'm gonna show you how we use those. Uh, this is to plumb in our coolant and this is to plumb in our oil and our oil return. Um, you can grab stuff off the rack that you're grabbing the rest of these components from, but I find that this makes it so much easier, so much faster and so much cleaner of an install. You also wanna to try to score an airbox lid from a Toyota Hilux Surf with a 2LTE. As you can see, compared to the one that came on the 3L, this is much smaller than this. And it might not look like a huge difference, but if you're using the correct hoses, this won't fit on your old airbox lid. It's too sloppy. You'll never get that to clamp down. So that's why you want to try to use this bigger one if you can find it. If you can't, there's a workaround. You could still use this. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. Might look a little bit more redneck. If you want it to look pro, get one of those. So this is that EGR port that I was talking about. And we have to plug this. So what I did and what I like to do is I just cut a piece of steel from an old bumper and traced it and we're gonna plug it with this. Now you can tap this and use that to uh, uh, plumb in your exhaust gas temperature probe, but I find it gets a little crowded right there. So I'm gonna show you another spot to do it. But um, this is a good way to plug this EGR hole. And when you do this, you should use a gasket. So I just bought some, um, exhaust gasket material from the local auto parts store and I traced it and made this try to do it one-handed here 
and just used a step drill to drill those holes out. And it doesn't have to look pretty. You're not even gonna see that, but you do wanna make sure that it seals up tight. So we're actually gonna put our pyrometer probe in this hole right here. And the reason that I chose this hole is number one, it's gonna put it out of the way. And number two, I already have a pilot hole for my drill bit. So when you put in a pyro, almost all of them are 1 8 27 NPT pipe thread. So you're gonna need a 1 8 27 NPT tap and a 5 16 inch drill bit. Okay, so what I was talking about before about how I was gonna use some of the parts from this turbo and put it on our new turbo. Uh, the new turbos never come with these studs. And these studs actually aren't available new from Toyota anymore. And if you ever buy used parts, especially exhaust parts, you know that the threads are always boogered up. So I'm gonna show you how to pull these out, but first I'm just, I'm running a tap over these just to make sure that the threads are good, and then I'm gonna pull these out of here. So one little trick you can use is you just do a double nut, flange to flange, tighten them both against each other, and then you should be able to just back it right out. That's actually pretty crazy how easy this is coming out. Usually you have to heat it up a lot and uh, put a bunch of breakaway on it. But I've been soaking these for a couple days, so that's probably why it came out so easy. Okay, all the old studs are out of the old turbo and in the new one. And we're gonna go ahead and put the gasket on there. This is for the dump pipe that hooks up to our exhaust pipe. They've all gotta go down at the same time or it won't go on. And don't force it, because if you bend the gasket, then you'll be getting a new one. And then I took a piece of emery cloth and I just kinda cleaned that up a little bit. Uh, as you can see, there's still some rust on there, but as long as you uh, have a clean surface where it, it seals up, and you can see this part right around here is where it actually seals. There's a little rust out here. It's not that big of a deal. So go ahead and put that on. And it's a lot easier to do all this part outside the truck and that's why I'm doing it here on the bench. I always put a thin coat of ultra gray uh, gasket maker, uh, RTV, before I put the uh, oil and water flanges on, and not because I'm afraid they're gonna leak, because these gaskets that uh, these flanges come with, they do fine. It's not that I'm afraid they're gonna leak, it's just if I ever have to take this flange off, uh, these gaskets, they get stuck on there like cement and it's really, really hard to get it off in this small space with a razor blade without taking the turbo completely apart. And even then, it's really hard to get those off. So I always used a, a thin coat of some sort of oil resistant RTV just so that if I ever have to work on it again, it peels right off. I'm just gonna stick that right on there like that. And we'll do the same thing with the coolant supply. Okay, so before you tackle this project, what you need to do is spray all these bolts down with some sort of breakaway PB blaster, Marvel mystery oil, um, whatever your preferred rust uh, breaker is, and start soaking those bolts down a day or two before. You're also gonna have a hard time getting to this back manifold bolt if you don't take the AC compressor off. So we are gonna take this AC compressor off. I'm not gonna take the lines off just yet. You don't necessarily have to do that right away, but you do have to take the belt off 
and break these four bolts that hold the AC compressor on and then tuck it back here so that you can get this manifold off. Okay, so I got the manifold off. I had to pull this uh, AC compressor bracket off and take the alternator loose. I didn't have to take it all the way off, but I had to take it loose to get this AC compressor off uh, in order to get to these two bolts back here. Now I pulled all the studs out of here because I am gonna have to move some things around. You can see where the old holes were and you can see where the old manifold sat in those cleaner spots there. Well, the new manifold is gonna sit in a different spot. But what I wanna show you is that all the holes are actually drilled. So here's the new manifold gasket and it's gonna utilize some of these holes that I wasn't using before, like this one right here where my thumb is and then this one down here that you can't see because that master cylinder's in the way. But all the holes are there. And that's nice because that's gonna make it really easy. You don't have to drill and tap anything. You just move a few studs around. Before we put our manifold on, we wanna make sure that our EGR is deleted with some sort of a delete plate. Put a gasket in there and make sure it doesn't leak and put some lock washers on it or some exhaust nuts to make sure they don't back off. Then go ahead and figure out the orientation of your manifold gasket and put two bolts in to hold it while you put it on. We've got the oil line for the to feed the turbo and the oil line for the return for the turbo plumbed in prior to putting the manifold on. What we did was we just cut this line that goes to the vacuum pump on the alternator. And there's actually a return for that vacuum pump right here as well. This will get held up a little bit so it won't be right up next to the oil filter. And then we'll put the manifold on. So we've got our turbo all mounted up now. All the air intake piping is on. And the coolant lines are plumbed in. These are uh, heater hoses right here. Here's your heater feed and your heater return. And it doesn't matter which one of these goes to wear on the turbo. Just as long as they're both hooked to the turbo, that's all that matters. This is a jacket for feed and return. If you were to switch these two on this side, it wouldn't matter. And we left our oil supply line unhooked. And the reason I did that is because I want to prime this with oil prior to starting the engine. I don't want to dry fire my turbo. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. Okay, probably easier for me to just show you on this pump, on this truck. This is a different engine, but all these Toyota mechanical injection pumps are built exactly the same way. So your fuel cutoff solenoid is right here. It's just this wire. You'll unplug that. And then that will allow you to crank the engine without actually giving fuel to the injectors, and that way you can prime your oil line. the oil all right so now that I've got oil running out of this thing I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook it back up and I'm gonna crank on it just a little bit more I'm gonna prime that turbo up with oil and then we'll be ready to um, hook up our gauges and start the motor all right we're just getting our gauges ran our pyrometers hooked up ran into the cab and I want to show you how to tune this injection pump before I do, we've got a breather hose hooked up right here. And our boost gauge is coming right here into this where the breather was on our air intake. And anywhere, you, you wanna make sure that anywhere where a hose is rubbing another hose or here in this case, it's touching this brass fitting just barely, 
um, they make this Kevlar spiral wrap and it's really important. It will rub a hole if you don't spiral wrap it or protect it somehow. Anywhere where anything's touching, it will rub a hole. I've seen hoses rub holes in aluminum um, AC lines. So that's very important. And I'm not gonna walk you through how to uh, tune this injection pump in real time, because this vehicle's in here for a job and, and I need to stay focused and keep working on it. But if you can see where I've got this finger magnet pointed, that's the power screw on the back of the injection pump. Um, there's a little uh, sleeve on here, which is kind of like a, a tamper sleeve. Um, if this is off, you know that somebody's messed with the injection pump at some point. But you'll have to pull this little sleeve off, and there's a jam nut on there. And if you turn this um, a quarter to half a turn, I would go a quarter turn at a time and then drive it, see how you like it. But you turn this right here, and that'll turn your fuel up. And you want to do that with the engine running. So you start it, you turn your fuel up. And as you turn your fuel up, your idle will also go up. So once you have this screw where you want it, you will have to adjust your idle. And the idle screw, if my camera will fit in there, I'll just show you on this pump here on the bench because it's a lot easier. This is your power screw right here. This is what you turn clockwise to turn your fuel up. So anytime you add a turbo, you're gonna need more fuel to feed that turbo. So just back this jam nut off right here and then turn this screw in, turn it clockwise. As you turn it clockwise, your RPMs will also go up. So you'll have to adjust your idle and that's this screw right here. Do all of this while the engine is running so that you can get your RPMs just right. So you'll back this jam nut off and you'll turn this counterclockwise to adjust your idle down to compensate for the fuel that you're giving it. Here's the tools that I use to adjust uh, the power screw on pretty much all the mechanical Toyota diesel pumps. I use a 12 millimeter articulating head ratchet wrench. That way I can get on the jam nut. And I turn the power screw in with a six millimeter socket. And you'll have to hold the jam nut with this while you turn the power screw with that.